Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 7. Today we're going to be doing my review slash breakdown for Episode 4. So this episode was really good, so I can't wait to talk about it. Lots of shocking twists and turns that we need to break down and go through and freak out about. So without further ado, if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. We've got a lot to get through and we're going to start off right at the start of the episode and we'll get to some of the major points and we'll skip right to some of them very, very soon. Okay, so we start off at the start. We have Barry making this cute dinner, this cute setting, kind of like Superman in the last episode of Superman Lois. And so he's trying to make up for the past time and all his mistakes. And so a big theme throughout this episode is the character's regret and their guilt for what has happened to them and especially those people who were stuck inside the mirror verse, but also people like Barry who were stuck on the outside and were basically duped by these mirror clones. And so you have the back and forth with that throughout the whole episode. And so Barry is trying to make up for this lost time together. And so he makes this really cute dinner. They've been to all these different places from around the world. Later in the episode, he has this really nice moment where he basically packs their bags. He books a place in Monaco and is like, let's go. But obviously that is interrupted later. However, this all starts off and we get this big earthquake and we're like what is this earthquake and we're just like oh maybe it's like a normal central city earthquake but it turns out as you look out the window the shot goes out and you see multicolor lightning and you know there is something more to it and there definitely is because later in the episode we got the introduction of the strength force now we're just going to quickly skip to that point considering that i just mentioned it so we're going to talk about the strength force. So this moment had me like, what the hell is going on? Like I audibly gasped. I audibly swore when I was watching the episode because I was like, what the hell is this? We were expecting blood work. That was our guess from what we saw on the set. However, it's something completely different, a completely different all CGI character. So this comes after they defeat Abracadabra later in the episode. And obviously we're going to go over Abracadabra's stuff in just a minute because it's very important for what's to come. However, Abracadabra is like, you are an ugly one. I thought that was like a really nice line, so I kind of wrote that down. And so Kadabra turns out to be a hero. And so this guy, this mega huge dench dude, literally absorbs the bomb. Like literally the antimatter bomb. So you know this guy is super strong. And we're like, what the hell is happening? Who the hell is he? He's just like come out of nowhere. He's attacking the Flash. And Abracadabra is turning out to be a hero. Abracadabra gets smacked and basically he sadly dies and so he dies a hero and so after this to seals like this could have been death itself and so it seems this new unstoppable villain is gonna definitely be coming back and causing havoc well now who is the strength force and so this is a specific thing that was introduced last episode and what i just referenced came at the start of the episode with the multicolor lightning because they represent different forces you've obviously got the speed force you've got the steel force which we've kind of seen with the turtle before if you guys remember him now you have the strength force and it's very likely that this person isn't the literal strength force however he is like a conduit of the strength force kind of like how barry carries the speed force with inside of him and so if you obtain the powers of the strength force you are enhanced in strength and durability and basically you are boosted to be almost literally like a rock and in the comics they're able to shift the earth at that cool and that is how he is creating the earthquake so that's where the seismic activity is coming from in the episode and so yeah it's very exciting to see the different forces actually being put into play this fast after last episode so whoever this guy turns out to be and he does look kind of crazy like i mean whatever he's wearing is absolutely mad and he's very terrifying he is a conduit of the strength force and that's kind of what's going on i don't know what specific character he is but for now we're gonna refer to him as the strength force so that is our first look at the sage force and basically giving the strength force to this one guy so let's hop back to the start of the episode and go over what we see so the flash does an interview with a reporter this is at the central city strong event and so you get reference to cord industries and that's been referenced many times before and so they're volunteering star labs is on shift at central city strong they didn't organize it as like a city-wide thing it's an interesting thing however i think this might be one of the weakest parts of the episode because apart from the finale we didn't see 
the world actually get that much impacted by the Mirrorverse until last episode, so I don't get this whole kind of shift to say, oh, everyone's been affected, like, we need to help rebuild the city, because before last episode, and I don't know how many people she converted into Mirror Clones, however, it just seems a bit off, and maybe that's just me, or maybe they just haven't shown us enough in terms of, like, other people's lives being affected, because they only really showed us Iris, Singh, and Camilla actually being in the Mirrorverse, and obviously Barry's been affected by it, Joe was affected by it last episode, but no one else, like, no random civilian we've seen being dragged into the mirrors apart from that CCPD officer. So I don't know if I 100% buy this kind of Central City Strong thing, but that's just me. Let me know what were your thoughts on this in the comments below. Anyway, Abracadabra returns, he kills this guy, and then basically you get the next day, and we see the crime scene, and it turns out Abracadabra has a few new toys. You have this great scene just after this with Cisco, and he's like, where'd you get your fancy new toys from? It's really funny and it's a great scene. But anyway, he has a new wand. He's able to use these different powers using the wand. And obviously he's from the future, like the distant future, where he is Barry's nemesis or he's like a villain of him and they're always at odds apparently. And so he's shrinking these objects throughout the episode and you're like, what the hell is going on here? And then it all kind of builds up to this, this orb of antimatter that forms, which turns out to be an antimatter bomb and he is trying to wipe out the whole city. So, during the crime scene investigation, Cisco finds out about this guy being a time traveler, then they see the cards, they're like, oh my god, we know this MO, this is Abracadabra. So, Team Flash find out it's Abracadabra, he is back, and so he created time quakes, they say, however, this is disproved later in the episode, because Abracadabra says, this wasn't me, and then that strength force dude just pops out of nowhere and rips everyone to hell. So, another part of the episode that I wasn't very sure on, because I don't think it was a very good scene, maybe it was just the actor in this scene, however, the Mirrorverse support group was a little bit cringy. I mean, the intention is good, but like I said, we really didn't get any build-up of anyone else getting affected, so I get that Iris and Barry and everyone are very affected by it, but the way that they talk about it, I don't know, I just didn't buy into it, and so I wasn't so sure about all of the random Central City citizens just, like, speaking about their experiences and stuff. But later in the episode, you actually had this very good scene with Iris at the support group where she's talking, and because we're connected to the events that have happened with her, it's a really good scene. So I do think it's because there was a lack of build-up in regards to everyone else. Okay, so let's move on. So you have the Flash and Vibe, and Kadabra calls him Mecha Vibe. Apparently, that is his name in the future, and he just named him right now, so I reckon we're going to be calling him Mecha Vibe from now on, and I really like that. That's obviously like a reference to him and his new suit, but also it could be a reference like Mecha Godzilla. That's a thing, like people have been talking about that recently, obviously with the new Godzilla film. However, that's been a thing for a long while, so it's a nice kind of Godzilla reference. And so you get this reference to Cisco's future. And so it seems like Kadabra has all of this insight. And this is a way for the showrunner, Eric Wallace, to basically drop all of this info and these teases for the future. And there are a lot of teases. And what comes next is a huge tease and probably one of the biggest teases. So you have him mentioning Kronarch, and he says, if I kill you now, you won't have to face the wrath of the Kronarch. So, with him mentioning, we're like, who is Kronarch? And so, I did some digging, and there is not much information on it, but it is a Flash character who has appeared in a couple of issues, and is linked to Abracadabra. So, I guess there's a possibility that we're going to be seeing him, considering they referenced him, However, it must be emphasized that this is strictly a reference, and yes, it might be setting something up. However, we've had like the Red Death reference in the past, and everyone's been so adamant that's going to come to fruition. So, I'm going to say, take it with a grain of salt, there is a high possibility that Kronarch will be one of the main villains of the season. However, you have the Strength Force and the Sage Force stuff happening right now, and you've also got Godspeed, and if Godspeed is disconnected from that stuff and comes as the back half villain, we're probably not going to see Kronarch this season. However, he is linked to Abracadabra, so I don't know now with Abracadabra being dead, 
are we going to see him at any point? We'll have to wait and see. And so him talking about the wrath of Kronog, does that mean that this is the point where Barry is going to die? Because he talks about like him killing him right now is like him letting him off from not facing Kronog and probably dying in the future. So I really like all this future references and it definitely sets up stuff for the future and I would be interested to see Kronark. It's all very fascinating when they tease stuff and like what happens if Barry goes back to the future very soon that would be amazing. But then we're going to move over to what happens at Argos. So Argus detain him, they're using holograms, I thought that was like a kind of funny scene and it was a bit weird at the same time. But just after this we have Cisco taking a test on Frost and so there's something up with her but we're not sure and then we get the big answer towards the end of the episode where we get the big reveal that Caitlyn and Frost are two separate people now and Cisco kind of freaks out over this and I was like what the hell is going on and I'm sure you guys are like what the hell is going on and so they've obviously found some sort of way to split them and that's probably through Caitlyn's medical expertise. Anyway so Abracadabra escapes and then we cut back to Barry and he's booked this place in Monaco. You had this cute romantic thing again. However, he's alerted of Abracadabra. And so they call off the plans and Iris is like looking at her article. And so you have this whole lingering thing with Iris and she's kind of unsure about what to do, especially since being back in the real world and she has to deal with her traumas now. And so Abracadabra combines his objects that he's been creating, making a glowing orb, and he will make Central City disappear. That's how they leave off before the ad break and then when they came back basically they refer to it as crisis part two i thought that was very interesting and so it's an antimatter bomb which has the ability to blow up earth or possibly blow up an entire universe but it turns out this is a bit less strong so it's basically going to take out like the whole city and potentially part of the earth at least like half of the earth i would reckon and so cisco references some stuff that he's taken from Atlantis, so that's a reference to Aquaman, and so he's teleporting to charge his antimatter bomb, so he's going all over the city, that is of course Abracadabra, and so it's kind of crazy that they're setting up this whole crisis thing, and they're referencing it so much in this episode, like we literally get a reference to Laura Lance and Mia Queen, and so that is a Green Arrow and the Canaries reference, and we're like, why is he referencing this, but it turns out it's all to build up to this big reveal, and we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so Barry is struggling with his guilt as well as Iris in this episode, as he still struggles with the idea that he never noticed that it was a mirror version of Iris and it wasn't the real Iris, and so he feels incredibly bad, and at this point he gets a flashback to season 3, and he basically finds out what went on with Abracadabra, and this is his way to break through to him. And so then we get the introduction of, of the device that Cisco made. This is the Martian Memory Restorer, I think that's what they called it. And so apparently he stole it from the future, so Abracadabra is one of those. He restores part of his memories, basically stuff that was erased after Crisis. So I guess Cisco made that, but I don't remember them actually bringing that up before. I guess it's like a new invention he's made recently. However, you get the Flash versus Abracadabra at this point, and so he's not going to defeat him using his fists, and so he knows why he's hurting, and it's revealed that his family from another timeline basically were erased from this timeline due to Crisis, and he found out that he had been affected by neural temporary displacement, which is caused by speedsters going back in time, and so he's like, this is definitely because the Flash didn't die in crisis and so he's caused all of this havoc for different people because the timelines have changed but it's especially painful for Abracadabra because his family has been erased and now with Cisco's device he's been able to remember all of that and he's trying to get them back although he hasn't calculated by doing this he's going to be killing like a bunch of people but he hasn't calculated that there is any chance of his family coming back due to what he's doing. And so there's reference to the Flash Museum, so in the future he actually goes to the Flash Museum, that's where he finds Cisco's memory device, he basically launches it, uses it, and also at this point he references that Barry will be obsessed with the future. That was another tidbit that they included that I think will be very important for what's to come. And especially if they introduce more stuff to do with time travel and the future, Barry's definitely going to become obsessed again like he was in the past. 
Like, he was totally obsessed when you had Savitar, Reverse Flash, because all of that stuff really is to do with time travel, to do with the multiverse and traveling Earths and everything. So it's great that they're introducing some of this stuff again and teasing that Barry will be obsessed with the future. Okay, so Barry didn't vanish, and this basically caused his family to disappear. This is part of his trauma. This is all because of Barry and him not dying in Crisis. And so Barry gets through to him finally, as a true hero, Barry shines and basically tells him to face your trauma. And at this point, Iris has a moment of realization, basically saying that she's going to face her trauma very, very soon. And she does at the end of the episode. And so it kind of builds up to this big moment and Barry reveals who he lost in Crisis. And so he references Oliver. And so I thought this was a really touchy moment and they've been building to that because Abracadabra is not the only one who had been affected by Crisis. Because of Crisis, Oliver died, the Green Arrow of course, and so I thought that was a really nice reference, bringing in Arrow and bringing in Crisis to this, and I thought it was just really, really touching. And I mean, it's really nice to get a reference to Arrow considering Arrow hasn't been on for a while and that we're not completely ignoring it. So I thought that was really touching that Barry mentioned Oliver as his friend lost in crisis. And so the Flash and Kadabra are apparently mortal enemies in the future. But in this new version of the timeline, he becomes a hero. And so it's at this point that you get the introduction of the Strength Force and we're like, what the hell is going on? Major shocking moment, but we're definitely going to be seeing more of him in the next few episodes and onwards but then we move towards the end of the episode and you got this nice little line from iris and she says barry and iris is the strongest superpower there is she says something along those lines and i thought yeah that's pretty touching and also it's going to trigger a lot of people who don't like the sentimental part of the flash however i really like it i thought that was a nice line i thought it was very touching and so iris goes to the therapy group and like i said earlier in the episode i don't think it worked with the random people talking However, when Iris talks, when Candace talks, I thought it was a really nice scene, great music going along with this, and so she is facing her traumas head on, like the hero she is, and she gives this inspirational speech to all of the other people there, and it's just a really, really amazing moment, and some great music to go along with it, and I think in the music it said, you gotta be tough, you gotta be stronger, you gotta be cooler, which goes along with Iris' messaging in this moment, and so, then you have Cisco playing against Chester and you get this Fortnite reference and I thought that was just funny because like it's a total Cisco thing to do. And like I mentioned earlier, the last scene of the episode is Caitlyn and Frost. They are now separated, so what's going to go on? They're definitely going to get into trouble or at least Frost is going to get into trouble now that they are separated. And I'm interested to see what they do with this in the next episode. But that was a crazy episode, lots of shocking twists and turns. The strength force literally showed up and then you had all the teases for the future. Abracadabra said Barry will become obsessed with the future and a major moment was when Abracadabra referenced Kronark and that Barry will be facing his wrath and it seems like that's going to be a fate far worse than death. So really excited about all of this and hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Remember guys, please be sure to leave a like and a comment if you did enjoy the video. Also, please be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications if you are new. Also, later today we're going to have a Superman Lois episode 5 review. This is the last week for Superman Lois before it goes on a 7 week break. And so Supergirl is going to be on. So from next week onwards on Tuesday we're going to be covering The Flash and Supergirl. Can't wait to do that. But also later today... After my Superman Lois episode 5 review, a couple of hours later, you're going to be getting my Flash episode 5 trailer breakdown. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.